It's a sticky situation choosing the right adhesive for the right job on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a recent video, I discussed various solvent cements and my personal favorite solution for solvent cement for gluing styrene to styrene. Well, as I read the comments and questions from that video, I realized it might be a good idea to do an entire video on the variety of adhesives that are available for hobby uses and the different ways that we can use them in model railroading. Now, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that the science of adhesives could cover an entire college course and maybe even more. There is so much that we could discuss and so much that we could learn. So we've got to narrow it down a little bit. I'm sure that there is something that some of you know that I won't cover today. So please feel free to tell us what you know, to tell us what you think is important in the comment section down below. But let's go over to the workbench where I'm going to show you some common questions that we should ask about our projects that will help us to know what type of adhesives will work best for that particular project. Be sure and check out Midwest Model Railroad. With some of the best prices and customer service in the business, they're your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. When we talk about adhesives for model railroading, uh, we have uh, to talk about a wide variety of, of adhesives because model railroading includes several different sub-hobbies or subsets that can use a variety of different materials. So we might at any one given time be working with wood or cardboard or paper. We might be working with plastic of a variety of kinds. We might be working with metal. We might be working with foam or plaster and on and on we could go. And each of these different materials can require different kinds of adhesives to glue them to themselves or to glue them to, to one another. So what I'm gonna to do today is not so much tell you about a, uh, an adhesive that you should use, but I'm gonna tell you uh, briefly a series of questions that you should ask about your project and its materials that will help you know what to, to know what adhesive is best. Um, and I want you, uh, first of all, to understand the difference between two basic types of, of, of adhesives uh, that we use all the time, uh, and that is evaporative adhesives and reactive adhesives. Evaporative adhesives uh, have some sort of an adhesive uh, that is in solution in some sort of a solvent, uh, and when it's applied, the, the solvent evaporates and just leaves the adhesive behind it. In other words, it dries. Uh, and, and then the things are, uh, are adhered together. Uh, a, a, a reactive adhesive uh, does not require air. Uh, it does not require drying. It's not about uh, something evaporating. Uh, it is cures as a result of a chemical reaction between the adhesive and some other substance, whether it's moisture in the air or, or, or uh, some sort of uh, a reactant that we, that we mix with it. Uh, and those two types of, of adhesives are good for different kinds of, of projects. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. Most of the adhesives that I think we probably use uh, on, on an almost daily basis, uh, basis are evaporative types of adhesives. Uh, there are, for example, good old fashioned PVA or, or white glue. Uh, you remember using you know, school glue back when you were in school? Um, uh, you know, the more grown-up version is glue all that's a little stronger, a little less uh, 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 water-soluble after it dries. Uh, but there are a lot of other kinds of PVAs that we use too, um, such as uh, canopy glue that's become very f popular in the last uh, several years. Uh, things like like Aileen, Aileen's Tacky Glue or... or uh, uh, Woodland Scenics Hobby Tack, which are uh, PVA kinds of glue that remain very flexible, very sticky and tacky for a long time that have certain uh, applications. Um, our uh, good old fashioned scenic cement, whether we, we buy it like this, uh, already made up, or whether you make your own with, uh, with white glue or with uh, a matte medium or Mod Podge, uh, 
Uh, same kind of thing. These are all evaporative. These are all have a, 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 an adhesive that is dissolved in water. So, so water is the solvent in these cases. And over time, the water evaporates, the glue uh, adhesive remains behind, and, and those things uh, stick. Uh, also, don't want to forget good old-fashioned wood glue also fits into that same kind of category. It's not a PVA so much, but, uh, uh, but same kind of glue. Uh, some other kinds of glues that are also evaporative that we might not think of as such, but they really are, uh, that is the solvent cements, as I talked about in a previous video using solvent cement for plastics. Uh, the solvent cements, as we buy them in this form, uh, are actually an evaporative adhesive because this contains a combination of a solvent and a, a, a dissolved plastic filler. And so what happens is this particular type of cement will soften the plastic that it's used on, uh, but also that plastic filler that is dissolved in the, the cement will adhere to the plastic that, that we are cementing together. Uh, and then the, uh, the solvent evaporates out very, very quickly and the plastic re-hardens along with the filler and it makes a, a, good, a good connection. I, I, I want to clarify one thing as we're talking about solvent cement, because in that previous video, I talked about the fact that my, what I've come to go to for, for a solvent cement is, is MEK. Uh, I want to clarify that to say that MEK is technically not a solvent cement, but rather is just a solvent. Uh, it basically is the same as a lot of these solvent cements minus the filler. The MEK, as we would buy it in this form, doesn't have the filler in it. What it does is it softens the two pieces of plastic uh, and literally welds them together without using an, a separate filler, but just the plastic that's uh, involved in the joint itself. The same is true of, of acetone, uh, which is commonly used to, uh, to adhere uh, acrylic or plexiglass together. Again, technically not a solvent cement, just a solvent but it does the, the, the accomplishes the same purpose just by using the plastic that is, uh, that is available in, in the material. All right, we, we were talking about evaporative uh, kinds of, of ad, uh, adhesives. A couple more. Uh, rubber cement is an evaporative adhesive. Uh, again, similar to the solvent cement, it, it contains a rubberized material that is dissolved in a, a solvent. Uh, there's just a lot more of it. That's why it is so thick. And, and whenever the solvent evaporates, uh, it leaves uh, qu quite a, uh, quite an amount of that rubberized uh, material uh, behind. Uh, we uh, we often uh, kind of start off in our model careers with with uh, like a tester's plastic cement. This is actually a solvent cement. It's just a lot thicker. It has a lot less solvent and a lot more of the plastic filler in it. Uh, but works the same way. Uh, and then contact adhesives. Pliobond is a, a popular contact adhesive uh, where you would apply this to, to both pieces of work before you glue them together. You let it set up to the point that it's basically uh, just tacky. Uh, and, and what it's doing is it is evaporating. In this case, the solvent is MEK that is in this. As it evaporates away, it leaves just the adhesive behind. You stick the two together and when they're stuck, they're, they're stuck. Uh, very similarly, uh, spray adhesives uh, work the same way. A contact adhesive uh, that you work uses an evaporative process. So all those are evaporative cements. On the other hand, uh, we have what are known as reactive cements uh, or, or reactive adhesives. Uh, maybe key in the uh, hobby space is good old uh, super glue or CA. It's been around forever and is used a ton in a lot of different applications. Uh, this is actually a reactive cement. It reacts to moisture in the air or in the material that's being glued, and that moisture causes it to, uh, to set up. Uh, it comes, of course, in, in a variety of, of thicknesses or viscosities, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Uh, silicone, uh, if we use for certain applications, is a reactive ad adhesive. It doesn't require air. Good old uh, Gorilla Glue is also reactive. It reacts to moisture. That's why if you read the directions, it tells you to moisten or dampen both surfaces as you apply the glue and then, and then put it together. The one that I don't have an example of right here on my table is, uh, is epoxy. Uh, which is a, a reactive adhesive. And I used to be really intimidated by epoxy, but they've made it so much easier to, to purchase and use these days with these little uh, double syringe type tubes where you just squeeze out uh, equal amounts out of the, the little syringe. 
uh, into a cup and mix it up, and you've got uh, some five-minute epoxy, which works great as, an, as a, uh, a reactive cement. Now, why is the difference between evaporative and, and, and reactive adhesive so important? Well, it's important because uh, we need different kinds of cement uh, when we're working on porous or non-porous types of materials. Uh, when we're working on porous material, say example of wood, uh, we want a cement uh, that is that is ideal for a porous material, and that would be an evaporative type of, um, of, of, of adhesive because the moisture uh, that is the solvent in these adhesives uh, needs to evaporate or needs to be wicked away in order for this uh, sol uh, adhesive to, to, to dry and to cure. So in the case of wood glue, uh, for example, uh, that can dry in the air or if between two pieces of wood, the moisture is literally wicked away uh, into the wood itself and, and it dries and it cures. The problem we have is sometimes we are gluing uh, two materials together that are non-porous, and when they're non-porous, there's no way for air to get to the adhesive, nor is there anything to wick the adhesive away. So when we're, say, gluing metal to metal or metal to plastic, uh, those non-porous materials need something that will cure without having to have the moisture be removed. And that's when we want to go back to like our, our CAs or our epoxies. They are perfect for that because they, they cure as a result of a chemical reaction, not because moisture is, is removed. Uh, it's also important for us to ask, not only do we have a porous or non-porous material, so I'm using the right glue for that, but also are, are my materials similar or are they dissimilar? Uh, in, in other words, it's, it's one thing to be gluing two pieces of styrene together uh, or two pieces of wood together, but it's a completely different thing whenever I'm gluing a piece of wood to a piece of metal. Uh, and so that's when we want to, again, in most cases, use a, a reactive cement. CA is one of my favorite hobby cements when it comes to gluing dissimilar materials together, wood to, to metal or wood to plastic. CA is ideal for that. I don't like to use CA on plastic to plastic kinds of applications because over time CA becomes brittle uh, and, and it can break. Uh, and, uh, you know, therefore I, I don't like to use it in those applications, but I do like to use it for dissimilar materials. Uh, now, now is a good time maybe for me to talk a little bit about a, another property of adhesives, uh, and that is the property of cohesion. Uh, whenever we're gluing something together with CA, with wood glue, with whatever, uh, we want the, the adhe adhesive to adhere well to the material. That's adhesion. But we also need a, a, um, an adhesive that will stick reasonably well to itself. Uh, back when uh, I was a, a kid in, in shop for the first times and, and, you know, and doing my, the first applications of using wood glue, gluing wood to wood, I can remember my shop teacher talking to us about how we didn't want to use too much glue, a, a thin layer of glue that just makes uh, a good contact with both pieces of wood was what we needed, and then actually a thick layer of glue uh, was a detriment to our glue joint, which as a kid doesn't make sense. You think if a little glue is good, then a lot of glue must be better. The problem is the wood glue adheres incredibly well to the wood. It, it reaches into the pores and takes hold almost like tiny little screws in, in all the pores of the wood. But the glue itself, if it gets thick, a thick glue joint will break inside the glue because the glue, uh, the cohesion of the glue is not as strong as the adhesion of the glue to the wood. So we, we want to think about that cohesion a little bit. That is really important when we're dealing with uh, situations where we're working with flexible materials or things that might get bumped or, or, or receive a certain amount of stress. Uh, brittle kinds of glues, glues uh, adhesives that don't have good cohesion won't hold up to, to that. That's when we, a lot of times we want to use a more flexible glue. Again, like I talked about with our tacky glues uh, or, uh, or our, our canopy glue, because these are, are very flexible and will hold up to uh, a lot of stress and, uh, 
and have just really, really good cohesion. So asking that question, is this project, is this particular thing really rigid or is it flexible? Uh, another good question to ask is, is what is the environment that this uh, is going to be in? Uh, is there going to be large changes in temperature? Are there going to be large changes in humidity? Is this going to get wet? Uh, a lot of our PVA glues that we talked about a while ago are, are susceptible to uh, to re react uh, uh, engaging to, to to reacting to water. They will soften and uh, will actually release if if they are uh, if they are wet for a long period of time. Uh, whereas some of our, our other types of, of glues uh, won't uh, will not do that. Uh, and also along the, with that, we want to ask: Is our project dimensionally stable? There, we're probably thinking a lot more along the lines of bench work, where we're thinking about wood, because wood over time, uh, with uh, fluctuations in temperature and humidity, it's going to um, it's going to expand and contract. So we're going to want to have a, a glue that has uh, some uh, flexibility there that will allow it to 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 do that. One last question we want to ask ourselves, and that is: Are are my two surfaces that I'm gluing together are they perfectly mated, or are there some some gaps? Uh, if they're perfectly mated, uh, then then a, a contact uh, solution is is a great option. Plyo bond, or uh, sometimes our spray adhesives. Again, depending upon the particular application. Uh, but these are made for surfaces that have perfect contact, so two perfectly flat or perfectly mated surfaces. If we've got a surface that has some gaps, then we're going to want a, a, uh, a, an adhesive that can serve as a gap filler and still have good cohesion. Uh, that's, a, again, a good case for using certain types of CA. And I mentioned earlier, uh, CA comes in different viscosities. Uh, and a lot of times thicker CA is, is referred to as gap filling CA because uh, it literally can fill some, some minor gaps in a, uh, in, in a joint. And we get the CA in there and get that filled in and then use uh, some kind of accelerator, a zap kicker, to, uh, to, to cause that to set up very quickly or, or put some baking soda on it that causes it to set up quickly, get hard, and then we can sand that down and, and fill those, those gaps. Uh, our Gorilla Glue is another instance. Now this isn't something we want to use on, on our models necessarily, but say we're gluing a couple of pieces of foam together for a scenery base and, and they're, they're a little rough and they're just, you know, they're, maybe they're scraps of foam and they're not perfectly mated. Uh, Gorilla Glue, of course, if you're familiar with it all, it expands as it cures uh, and it'll expand into those gaps and help hold that, uh, hold that material together. So that's another a good option for uh, less than perfectly mated surfaces. So that's not a, a, an exhaustive coverage of adhesives at all, uh, but that gives you a sense of some important questions to ask whenever you're thinking about what adhesives should I use and the kind of adhesives, uh, adhesives that we can use in some specific situations in our model railroading uh, work. Well, I hope that information helps you a little bit as you are doing various projects for your own model railroad layout. And as you think about what adhesive will probably work best for that particular project and that material that you're working with. Well, if you'd like to see some of my favorite adhesives, check out the Amazon pick of the week in the description down below, along with all the other great links that are there. Also, if you'd like to see how I use those adhesives, here's a link to some model building projects that I've done that I think you'll enjoy as well. Well, if you'd like to see more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. 10, Lizzie?